quite funny, huh? Can I have the light a little bit? I need to see those guys. How many of you think this is a funny picture and are very surprised I'm starting my presentation with it? Well, not 100%, I like that, because indeed the title of the talk was Artificially Recreate Everyday Experience, and so I thought, let's start from an everyday object. And this object, it might seem weird, but actually resembles quite a lot what we study in our laboratory, because this object can absorb water inside, and when it absorbs water, it changes its thickness, it changes its softness, and so uh, it can be used as a sensor for water, if we would measure this change in thickness or this change in softness. Now, the sentence that really inspired my talk, and especially the title and the first slide, is this quote from Marie Curie. A scientist in his laboratory is not only a technician, well, I forgot the first part, I am among those who think that science has a great beauty, yes, <laughs> and a scientist is not only a technician in his laboratory, but he's also a child that uh, is placed before natural phenomena that impress him like a fairy tale. And the two parts that I really love about this sentence are this natural phenomena and a fairy tale. And so let's have a walk together now with me through the natural phenomena that impress me like a fairy tale. And to do this, I would like to ask you uh, to do another thing with me. So maybe I need again the lights. Uh, let's do all one experiment. Let's all touch our clothes for a moment. Yeah, perfect. So I'm sure you felt the difference between the different material, maybe between the cottons, the hard material of the jeans, if some of you had wool, you probably have felt also the difference in temperature between the different parts, and you would have felt also if the piece of cloth was wet or dry. Now, this is because our skin is actually full of sensors. Those sensors are called receptors for the more technical people, and these sensors are located in the deepest layer of our skin, and they allow us to sense the environment. So to sense if it is cold, if it is warm, to sense if we are having a light touch, a stronger touch, and so on. Unfortunately, what happens is that victims of burns or uh, amputees, for example, they, lo they lose completely the sensation of touch. And this is because the burn arrives to consume the, even the deepest layer of skin. Now, what if, and what if, we could recreate artificially this sensation of touch, this everyday experience that we have with our skin? I don't really know if you think so much of our skin, because for us it's so a normal thing to have that, you know, probably you give it for granted. But actually our skin is really the interface between the environment uh, and our brain. It makes us aware of what's going on around us. So if it is a cold day, our skin will feel the cold and will transmit this information to the brain, and, uh, and then the brain will uh, maybe give us the suggestion to wear a jacket. So the sensation is really important to have. Now, what we want to do with artificial skin is recreate this same circle of information. So artificial skins will be made very similarly to human skin of um, thousands of sensors, and these thousands of sensors will feel humidity, will feel temperature, will feel pressure, so light touches, strong touches, and will transmit this information to a brain cell, in the case of a uh, prosthetic skin, or to computers, uh, in case of robotic skin. Now, I want to give you one example of a person that would have really enjoyed to have a smart skin on him that would have told him that the temperature was getting higher. I hope you, remo you, rem you remember this movie. <laughs> Oh my God, it's clotted. Oh God. 
It's holidays. And how's that current program? God, it's hot in here. every time I see it. I hope you guys are not too young of a crowd. I hope you have seen this movie. <laughs> if not, this Mrs. Doublefire, I recommend you to watch it, even if it's a bit old, maybe. Okay, yeah, so imagine he would have had a skin there that would have told him, hey, the temperature is getting too hot, you are getting burned. But now, okay, jokes aside, uh, the application of artificial skin could really be um, numerous. Think, for example, of smart clothing. So like normal clothing that we have every day, and the clothes would then collect all the information about our body, like body temperature or the pH of the sweat. And so then transmit this information to app or cell phone that then would make with this kind of data uh, some useful piece of deal. Now, artificial skin already exists. Some examples are already under development in some lab, like National, uh, Seoul National University or Stanford at MIT. And this kind of skin, the first two examples on top, are um, skin that recognize movement. So for example, uh, one is placed between the upper arm and the underarm and can feel the movement of the arm. The other one developed at MIT was used for uh, targeted delivery of drugs. What do we want to do is we want to participate to this effort to make artificial skin with our sponges. Well, honestly, we don't call them sponges in our lab because we like to be a bit more technical, and so we, we call them polymers. But it's basically a similar, similar thing. So, like a sponge absorbs water inside, our polymers also absorb water inside. And this absorption of water depends on the temperature. At low temperature, they can absorb a lot of water, and so they are really swollen and big. And instead, at high temperature, they become tiny, tiny, they absorb much less water. I have near, now a couple of videos uh, that uh, we can show you how the thickness of our films in the lab change. And uh, so the video here shows that when we change the thickness, so the, the temperature, uh, the, th the color changes. The um, sample went from blue to reddish to again blue. Now, don't be scared. This does not mean that the artificial skin will be blue, neither red. This is just to show you the effect of the different thicknesses on the, at the different temperatures. And on the other movie, um, what we saw is that there were two samples, one with our sponges and the other one without our sponges. And what happened was that by blowing uh, humidity on one of the on one of the samples, the color didn't change, the one without the sponges, while instead on the other sample, when we blew humidity on top, the color was changing. Now, what we will do with these sponges is that we will um, uh, enclose them in a shell, and this shell will be made of the same material that uh, is in the lighter for cigarettes. So this material, when you do the movement, check, to turn on the lighter, uh, this creates a spark. And similarly, uh, will be this shell around our sponges. So um, the, the shell will produce an electrical pulse when the, um, the thickness of the sponge inside will increase. And this electrical pulse will be measured by the grid of electrodes. Now, I don't know if you noticed that word there, nanorod. If I can have again the light, how many people know what is nano? Nano, what does it mean? Well, almost all of you, awesome. Almost all. <laughs> um, yes, so it means one millionth of a millimeter. So there will be very, very tiny objects of this in this artificial skin. 
This means that our artificial skin will have a super resolution. So human skin has a resolution of one millimeter square. This means that we are able to fill uh, very tiny crumbles or hair or piece of paper. And the artificial skin that we want to create instead will have a resolution that will be at least 20 times better because it will be made with these nano roads. Uh, why, you might ask. Uh, well, again, if you are a bit creative, this could have uh, enormous application because, for example, then um, robots could feel for us if there are cultural bacteria around. And so tiny things that our skin cannot feel will be felt in the future. And I don't know if you are wondering now how we will create these nano roads. Now, we will create these nano rods starting from a uh, template, so like a mold. And we will fill this template like a kid when he plays with water and sand. Um, these templates will have holes where we want our nano rods to be. And now, yes, I use this uh, metaphor of the kid with water and sand, but to be completely honest, if we would do that, we would end up not really in a nano rod, but in a nano layer. Because when you think of how water fills a cylinder, it kind of grows this layer from the bottom, maybe creating more of a meniscus and not really regular like I plotted, but still also the meniscus will not be exactly what we want. So we will not use this technique. What we will use instead will be a deposition from the vapor phase, and the vapor phase will allow us to form a really nice coating over the wall of uh, our template. And so this will be how we will create first the shell, and then with another vapor process, we will create the uh, sponge inside the shell. And now that I've said this beautiful thing, I'm going to show you a video of a robot that we have at home. And if I ask the robot to grab a cold beer or a hot tea, that robot brings the cold beer and the hot tea. Just a moment. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Yeah, well, the reality is that we don't have this robot. <laughs> Honestly, this was is a project, it's an idea. It's, we just got a green light from the funding agency. The funding agency said, okay, guys, work on it. Uh, so maybe I'll come back in another five or ten years, and then I will show you the robot, but not now. <laughs> uh, now, this green light, was given to high-risk, high-gain projects. And I hope I have convinced that the high gain of this, of working in this field is really there. We could really go, do a great thing if this uh, project works. On the other hand, as I said, there is also high risk. It's a challenging idea. But honestly, this is what scientists are there for. We are there to explore new ways and then pave the way to future innovation. And so I would like to leave you with a final thought. Take the challenge. Thank you. <laughs>